Welcome to New York City, where the action never stops. And amid the hustle and bustle in Manhattan, the Big East Championship begins. Madison Square Garden has been its home since 1983. And perhaps no edition has been as anticipated as this one. 11 Big East teams could make the NCAA tournament field. One of those is UConn. The Huskies have won six Big East tournament titles, but haven't won a game in the tourney since 2005. Championship Week is presented by Dick Sporting Goods as we welcome you to day one of the Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Only in the Big East would a team ranked 19th in the nation be seeded ninth in its conference tournament. But that's the case with UConn, a 9-9 league record taking on DePaul in game one. Teams playing today will have to win five straight games to take home the title. Four teams earn to buy to the second round tomorrow, including the hometown favorite St. John's and the top four seeds get two buys, including regular season champ Pittsburgh and won't play until Thursday. And so it begins alongside Fran for show Doris Burke. I'm Dave Pass. Should be a great five days of basketball here on the ESPN family of networks from the guard. And it starts with UConn. Doris, the team started 10 and 0, 17 and 2, but really struggled down the stretch, losing four or five. You think about the Hall of Fame career Jim Calhoun has built at the University of Connecticut. Fundamental to his team's success has been dominance in the painted area. Great shot blocking and dominant rebounding. Well, in their weakness this year, it's been that rebounding and painted area. One guy that has not struggled in any phase of the game Kemba Walker that's Franny. exactly right and don't blame him for rebounding he's averaging five rebounds a game but this young guy has been the rocket engine which has propelled I think Connecticut's surprising season overall tremendous in transition because of his great quickness and he really puts pressure on a defense to load their defense to him in the half court you give him a running start to the rim and he's going to hurt any defense. Here's a great example of him getting to the rim. He shoots at a higher rate in transition than he does in the half court. And a concern for Oliver Purnell and DePaul today. Well, the star watch with Kemba Walker, a guy who can get into the lane with great frequency, Franny. They load their defense teams, do to take him away. Can somebody else score? Well, and a guy that needs to score for DePaul is the freshman, Brandon Young from Baltimore. A lot of pressure on him today with fellow freshman Cleveland Melvin out for the season. And here's the starting five for DePaul without Melvin, Young, and Kelly in the backboard along with Jimmy Drew, Tony Freeland, and Chris Faber. And for Connecticut, a change in the starting five. Tyler Olander, who did not even play in UConn's last game against Notre Dame, will start. So Horiaki will not be in the starting lineup. He did not start the last game either against Notre Dame. John Gaffney, Tim Quaggerty, Jeff Anderson, our officials. We are underway at MSG. Game one, day one of what should be a great 2011 Big East Championship. DePaul, one win during the year. In fact, they've won just three Big East games the last three years. One of those, though, was here at the Big East Tournament as Chris Faber misses the first shot. And Olander turns it over, trying to hit Walker on the wing. First year for Oliver Purnell. 401 career wins, including that long stint at Clemson. Trying to turn around this program, which has fallen on hard times the last four or five years. Well, if there's a guy whose makeup is built to rebuild programs, it's Oliver Purnell. He's done it at multiple stops. Jumper by Young won't go. And as you talked about, Fran, Kemba Walker, pretty good rebounder for a guy about 6-1. Absolutely. Chases down a lot of long rebounds. Wanda with a good look inside, and Lamb is fouled on the way up. First foul in the game. 25th year for Jim Calhoun at Connecticut, was seeking his 300th Big East win. Only Jim Beheim has won 300 regular season and Big East tournament games. They've had some big wins this year, including at Texas, which arguably was the best road win for anybody in the non-conference action this year. Well, look at their schedule. You know, you go back to Maui when they surprisingly won that tournament, beating Michigan State, Kentucky, Tennessee at home. They've had a very solid year and a lot of it is because of the growth of these young freshmen including this guy 
Jeremy Lamb Doris I think is going to be a rising star. I don't think there's any question and you could tell the frustration that coach Calhoun has had with the lack of rebounding Alex Oriaki out of the lineup today. He's been the most glaring guy He had 21 rebounds on the road at Texas and now can't seem to get a double digit rebounding game together. Favor with the offensive rebound and put back and that's a good sign. For DePaul. That's exactly what you're talking about. You, you think back to some of the great shot blockers, boy, that thing would have been sent back. Olander off the mark. Brandon Young with a rebound. Young was just one of eight from the field in the first meeting with Connecticut, a game that Connecticut won handily. Wow, another offensive rebound. And Freeland fouled on the way up. That's the first foul in UConn. No, you can see the frustration now Oriaki doesn't start but you can expect quick lineup changes if there's any disappointment on the backboards and already multiple chances both trips up the floor by DePaul and just solid job getting off their feet by Freeland and and you know those are toughness plays in there friend and that's something you don't see Connecticut out tucked in the front line. Well you're exactly right now keep in mind now. We saw it after the first basket. If they make this free throw, Oliver Purnell, Dave, will implement this full court pressure. And it doesn't matter if they lose by five or 52 like they did on Saturday. He is putting a system in for the future. And everywhere he's been, he's going to take his lumps early. But the style of play, multiple traps, pressure, full court, half court, is going to start from the very beginning of the game to the very end. Well, think about the regular season finale, the loss to Syracuse by significant numbers. And Listen, I, you know, I asked him about, you know, what in your nature allows you to do this. He said, I, I don't get as down at the losses. I'm able to put it behind me, I think, a little bit quicker than other coaches do. That's off the foot of Walker, so two turnovers early by Connecticut. Remember the Huskies lost in the first round last year. It was a little bit different. They were playing St. John's. Even though St. John's struggled last year, essentially a home game for them, and UConn had a bad year, uh, was the 12th seed. This is a, a different situation. The chemistry better for UConn this year. Jim Calhoun has loved coaching this team. And then Kemba Walker, uh, Calhoun says, one of his favorite kids that he's ever coached. But uh, can they go deep here in the Big East tournament, maybe improve their seed for the big dance? And a rebound there by Roscoe Smith, freshman from Baltimore. And keep in mind, they've caught a break because no Cleveland Melvin for DePaul and no Chris Wright for Georgetown in the next round. The Hoyas await 38 seed. Another turnover by UConn. Three early ones, and now the Blue Demons in transition. Kelly No from three point land, cleared by Jeremy Lamb, who averages over four rebounds a game. Here's Roscoe Smith, who was just a 16% shooter in Big East play from three point land as that was last touched by Walker it's DePaul basketball. Now what you like early Doris is DePaul is playing their style they're getting up and down the floor the question mark for DePaul today is I just don't think they have enough scoring uh, to be able to defeat UConn over 40 minutes they're going to have to be red hot today. Yeah no, there's no question. Uh, you, you do have a, a situation where Jeremy Lamb has a sprained knee, so you wonder if they attack him. There goes Young. I wondered about that. Would, mm -hmm. they, would they test that leg? And a turnover by DePaul, first one by the Blue Demons. They beat Cincinnati here in 09 in the first round, despite going 0 and 18 during the regular season. And they've struggled on defense. You guys talked about what Syracuse did to them. Bjorn shot 71% in that game on Saturday. And now they switched a little zone to Paul. UConn has yet to look sharp in their half court execution friend. Yep, and I've coached against Oliver Purnell. He loves to change defenses and particularly at a TV timeout. Jeremy Lamb from downtown. He was a Big East All Rookie team member. And he sprained his knee against Notre Dame. And was able to practice fully yesterday, and so he starts today. And a swap by Aquandu on the shot attempt by Young. And now Connecticut gets it ahead. Walker. Good look for McCombs McDaniel, who had a stretch one week in February where he averaged about 20 a game. Good adjustment. And it just goes to the weak side to, to prohibit any chance at a shot block. Holmes McDaniel didn't even practice yesterday because of tendonitis in his knee, but he comes into the lineup early here for Jim Calhoun as DePaul cannot come up with another bucket. They're one of nine. They're getting a lot of attempts inside but can't finish as Moses Morgan comes in for the Blue Demons along with Michael Bazookas. And Moses Morgan, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking back a generation ago, his dad Winston Morgan played for Bob Knight at Indiana. Out of Anderson, Indiana, Moses from Las Vegas, where the family lives now. But 
Seems like yesterday I was watching his dad play at IU. Time goes fast, Brent Brasillas. <laughs> yes. <getting old. laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> I grew up watching you coach, friend. Oh, yo, now you're, come on now, you're not that young. Shot clock at three. <laughs> Here's Freeland going baseline and Coombs McDaniel, and it's a violation. Second turnover by DePaul. UConn leading DePaul by three early in game one of the Big East tournament. Back to New York City after this timeout. Day one of the Big East Championship. Winner moves on to play Georgetown tomorrow. Seton Hall Rutgers up next here on ESPN2. Then tonight, Villanova, South Florida, Marquette, Providence. Does Marquette need to win, guys? What, what happens if they don't? If they lose, do they have a shot still at the NCAA tournament? Uh, I think they put themselves in a precarious situation. You're coming off two losses at the end of the regular season, Doris, and then a loss to Providence, I think, would really uh, not be good for the resume when the committee meets this week in Indianapolis. We said that to, to get 11 teams in, everything would have to fall right. That would not be falling right if Marquette, who is the 11th team in right now for the Big East, if they lost to Providence. Faber way off of the jump shot. Rebound by Coombs McDaniel. Here's Smith into the lane, called for the offensive foul, his first. Now, most that anyone's gotten in is eight, and that's the Big East. Done it three times. Now, of course, the tournament's been expanded to 68 teams, so it helps the conference's cause. And guys, you look at some of the other leagues and some of the other bubble teams, and even if Marquette loses, Marquette's resume still looks a lot better than some of these other teams in major conferences that well, are bubble teams. I'd say this. You don't want to play Marquette because they're a, a very tough out. Buzz Williams team plays very hard but the fact is you don't want to end your season with three straight losses so they're going to come in today with a sense of urgency. Here's Freeland with a reverse layup. The ball is now one of 11 from the field. Well, what do you notice? I mean, the thing you have to look at when you have as many losses as at DePaul, are they playing hard? And look at the intensity of Oliver Purnell on the sideline and the pressure being applied to the basketball. That means he's got their attention, friends. Oh, uh, there's no question. They're going to play hard. They're just, uh, they just don't have the talent right now. And they don't have this guy, Cleveland Melvin, the young man from uh, Baltimore who sprained a thumb against St. John's late in February. He's a unanimous all Big East freshman team. I think, look at look at what pops to me. I mean, a freshman in this league shooting 51% yep. and averaging that number is really, really impressive stuff. And he's, he's in Chicago, he's got fertile recruiting territory, and again, Oliver Purnell, you look over his history, uh, multiple stops for he's been yep. able to do. It gets Clemson into the NCAA tournament in each of his last three seasons. There's Cleveland Melvin. I think the thing that's impressive about him, guys, is uh, the foul was on Drew his second, is that Melvin's numbers went up in, in league yeah. games. A lot of times, see freshmen struggle once they hit league play. He was sixth in the Big East in scoring in conference games, third in offensive rebounds. Well, it's, it's kind of ironic because he verbally committed to UConn, pulled it back, and played at DePaul. And, and Doris, to your point about Oliver Purnell, he's been in this business for so long that he has a very even-keeled approach. He, I asked him before the game about the 50-point loss to Syracuse, and he said, you know what? We're not going to change our style because we want to keep games close. This will help our recruiting, the fact that when we say we press and run, we've done it from day one here at DePaul, and it'll work. Here's Olander. Kemba Walker has not taken a shot yet, but Connecticut's still on a 7-0 run, leading by five. They go to Oriaki in the low block. He's been struggling of late. Four points per game in his last three. Walker into the lane, gives it up again. What do you think of that, guys? He, he's had some shot opportunities, but even in the lane, he continues to pass. Well, you know what? I think I think it's good for I think it's good for Connecticut that he is in a pass first mode because we know he can get a shot anytime he wants. I think the fact that everybody in a white jersey needs to stay alert early because he's going to be able to distribute. I think it helps their team early. I think the only question you ask if he's distributing the basketball is it the right basketball play? And the answer there is yes. He got into the heart of the defense. A lot of you know the defense come in and he makes the right pass. Shabazz Napier, freshman who was named the all Big East rookie team, comes into the game. Third team foul, make that, uh, yeah, 13 foul on DePaul. 
And basket by Walker on his first shot attempt. Second leading scorer in the Big East. Also led the league in minutes played. Because of the size, he has learned how to adjust in the air to, to avoid defenders' arms and then use the body to protect. Franny, strong, strong body. Morgan in the lane. And that's a good sign as DePaul is able to get into the paint. Just at second field goal, though. Here's Walker. Just fired on the three. Rebound by Morgan. Morgan oh able to bank it in <laughs> over Coombs McDaniel. Back to back baskets for DePaul. Well, Morgan's a kid that really likes to shoot that three point shot, not used to really getting into the lane. And it's Freeland with a steal. And then a strip by Napier. Here's Walker in transition. And Kemba yep. Walker so good in fast break opportunities. You know what's interesting, guys? He shoots 48% in transition and only 40 in the half court. And it's exactly what we talked about, Doris. You've got to get back and get five jerseys into the lane to guard him. Five-point lead for Connecticut. Timeout by DePaul. Kemba Walker with four points for the Huskies. Well, Kemba Walker is a native New Yorker, and the guy can flat play basketball in transition. If you do not stop it early, he does a tremendous job attacking and exploding. And I think the, the difference, the disparity in field goal percentage, obviously, is in the half court, you've got an opportunity to load your defense to him, send multiple guys, and try to get it out of his hands for him. Well, exactly right. It's like a wide receiver. You know, when you spread the field, you got more room to operate, and that's what Kemba does. And unfortunately for DePaul, they give up 18 points a game in transition. There you see his numbers. This is kind of like playing with fire when you got a guy like Kimball Walker who can really shred your transition defense. Let me ask you this. I know you do a ton of international scouting, but Kemba, in the true sense of the word, is not a true point guard. He's a scoring point guard. He almost could make the point. He might be a better two, but his yeah. size will keep him out of that. An improved jump shooter, but how successful at the next level can this guy be? Well, I think he's I think he's going to initially, I think he's going to be a first-round pick, obviously, but I, what I like about him is, you know, he's like that second-unit point guard that can spurt your team a little bit, an Aaron Brooks type. Not quite the shooter Aaron Brooks is, but with the rules in the NBA, no hand-checking yes. allowed. You're going to allow him to get to the basket in transition. You could see him playing for a George Carl like where everything's up tempo make or miss. Here's a three pointer by Moses Morgan oh, wow. who in Big East game shot 36 percent from out there DePaul within two. Well, and that's what, exactly what the young man does. He loves to hang around that three point line. He's got the last seven points for the Blue Demons. We'll see how Connecticut respond with a little bit of adversity here in day one game one of the Big East championship. Napier looking for Walker. Kemba Walker, as Doris mentioned, from New York, from the Bronx, went to Rice High School. He has really struggled lately at Madison Square Garden. He misses there, but the tip is good by Oriaki. And they need him if they're going to not only play well in the Big East tournament, but in the big dance as well. But Jim Calhoun told him, I'm not asking you to solve the theory of relativity, fella. I'm asking <laughs> you to go get the ball. <laughs> I love when he said he's consistently inconsistent. Yeah. Got 4.3 rebounds today. Averages about 10 points and eight boards. Second in the league in rebounding. Here's another three-point try by Young. And DePaul starting to catch fire from three-point land. You know, the experience Brandon Young and Cleveland Melvin have gotten this year, even though DePaul has struggled, is going to really help them as Oliver Purnell builds this program because he has had to be, Doris, the go-to guy against a high level of competition this year and has really stepped up his game. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and there's nothing like going through and being relied on as a scorer as opposed to being a pit player or role player. He doesn't have to adjust his mentality next season at all. If I traveled with time running down on the shot clock and DePaul can take the lead. Now they're being blue devils from the perimeter. I mean, these two guys, Morgan, he has been sensational since he stepped between the lines this afternoon. And then Mr. Young gets it going. And they're playing with house money. They can play loose and free. Connecticut has the expectation on them. Baby. 
Welcome back to New York City where UConn has a one point lead on DePaul. Good start for the Blue Demons who had just one win during the regular season. They had lost 24 Big East games in a row until February 27th in Providence. Jeremiah Kelly had 23. Then the next game he had 25 against Villanova in a loss. Marshawn Brooks at 28. And it was not enough as DePaul won 79-76 on the road. I was in Providence that night. It was a pretty sloppy basketball game. DePaul gave Providence multiple opportunities to win it, but Oliver Purnell's team made just enough plays to win that basketball game. DePaul has hit consecutive threes and can now take the lead. UConn not helping itself. More turnovers than field goals. And DePaul has made its last four shots from the field. And they're going to get another open three as Stula fires off target though and Smith with the board. So far Lamb is the leading score for UConn with five. Kemba Walker has four. Seven for Moses Morgan off the bench to lead to Paul. I like it. I like when Napier has the ball in the half court. I really think their offense flows better. Kemba can play off the ball. Lamb now with seven after that jumper. Connecticut by three. And another three-point try and back-to-back -back misses. Young off the mark there for DePaul. And now a good luck by Lamb and a three-point opportunity for Kwandu. Well, I'd say this. Kwandu is a role guy. You want him to be a presence in the paint to rebound the basketball, but he's had a couple of shot opportunities here, and yep. he's made the most of them off. And just play off the other guys. Well, and you know who get, you know gets credit for this basket? Kemba Walker, because look where Young has to come. He has to guard Kemba Walker in the corner. That allows Lamb to get to the rim, force a Kwandu's man over. So Kemba Walker gets the quiet assist there because of his ability to be a score from the perimeter. Freeland picked up the foul. First on him, fourth on DePaul. And the three-point play for Kwandu attempted just 15 free throws during the regular year and made eight. Drew will try a three. Three straight misses from three-point land by DePaul, but they're not shy here. UConn on a 5 nothing run, and again, Walker giving it up. Lamb baseline leading in and a blocking foul. Now this guy has been able to carry the load. He upped his numbers actually in conference just slightly. And this is why you think they've got a chance to be good. Look at this explosion to the rim. And this is the closeout comes. It's very difficult to close out under control. He reads it beautifully, friend. Absolutely. And Charles Aquandu with a heads up play looking cross court to Lamb. And that four score us that long closeout. Probably the toughest thing in defensive back basketball is a long closeout try to keep your man under control you're sprinting and you're trying to get a hand yep. up a contest and still prevent the drive it's near impossible I yep. think the best guy who teaches that is you see Oliver Purnell all fired up in the huddle Chris Lowry does a great job of that and Bruce Weber as well the choppy little steps you've got yep. to take out to close out on a shooter right now Dave that's a teaching moment by Oliver Purnell because he doesn't really care about the score and he probably doesn't care about the result of this game because he knows the future is bright and what he's doing is making sure his team continues to compete regardless of the fact that UConn's now jumped on him a little bit seven nothing run by Connecticut the lead by eight Damn. Sure. Sorry, Dan. He did not look on that drive, Dave, like he was a guy concerned about a sprained right knee because he had to push off incredibly hard off that right leg. Yeah, you know, I, I really have had, you know, we've had a chance to see this guy, Jeremy Lamb. What you love about him is he didn't start as a high school junior, he was not a top 50 recruit. And when you look at Jim Calhoun's career at UConn, 23 NBA players, only seven McDonald's All-Americans. Wow. That means they've had a they've done a great job of developing guys through the years. And Jeremy Lamb fits that mold as a guy that's going to continue to get better. Eight straight points in a minute for UConn. DePaul was back within one, but three straight misses from three-point land, and UConn able to get buckets on the other end. Faber. And wave it off. He traveled. No foul. Another DePaul turnover. That's five against the Blue Demons. Guys, Connecticut ranked 19th in the country, yet the nine seed. Some are saying this is the best the Big East has been. 
I think you can argue with that, though, because as you look at the overall individual talent pool, it's really hard to make that claim. But certainly the most competitive it's been, right? Well, I think so. Yeah, I think from 1 down to 11, and then you look at what Seton Hall and Rutgers are capable of doing. Pretty pass by yeah. Napier. Wow. There was McDaniel with a basket. And to your point, this game has flowed better with Napier having yes. the ball in his hands. It all, all of a sudden, Connecticut looks better just, just Wait, eye test wise. You know why, Doris? Because it's human nature for everybody to watch Kemba dribble in the half court. I'm talking about his teammates now. Yes. And when he doesn't have the ball in his hands, everybody feels like they may get it. Faber with the miss, the challenge by Aquandu. Connecticut has made five straight from the field. Kemba Walker unable to knock that one down. Walker just two of six. He has not won a Big East tournament game and shooting just 23% here at the Garden in Big East tournament action. Coming into today anyway. And he's now two for 17 lifetime in the Big East tournament from three point lane. I don't think they need him though today. 11 point lead here in New York City as the Big East championship begins in Manhattan. This telecast available in 3D on ESPN 3D, brought to you by Sony. Here at the Garden, Connecticut, by 11, six fast break points for the Huskies. Well, and this guy, Kemba Walker, obviously one of the quickest players in the country. We talked about how you have to build your defense before he gets near the lane, and you see he's able to slice and dice the three DePaul defenders back because of that great quickness and the unawareness if you will of the blue demons in transition it's 14 to 4 points in the paint and it doesn't necessarily have to come from your post guys if you've got great dribble penetration as they have from lamb or, or kemba you can get in there and get some easy shot opportunities it's reflected in that field goal percentage and to paul no points in the last four minutes it's an eight nothing yukon run well, you lost the handle but his last touch by Connecticut. That's why I never really believe in assist rates because, you know, they say, well, 20 baskets, 15 assists. And you got a guy like Kemba Walker, there's not going to be as many assists because he creates his own scoring opportunities. So you don't want me to say nine baskets, five assists right now? Uh, not with Kemba Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Walker has one assist, and here he is again in transition, giving it up to Napier. And Lamb with a great one-handed finish on the alley-oop. And a foul. Pretty, pretty pass. Napier has made two terrific finds. And again, he gets the ball in his hands. They look like a different team. It allows Kemba to get off the basketball. Watch this, a little look away. And how about the catch and athleticism? by Mr. Lamb. That was a no-look alley yep. here, too. You know, Shabazz Napier is from the Mission Hill section of Boston, and I don't know if you remember the name, Will Blaylock, who played at Iowa State and then with the Detroit Pistons. Well, he was raised, really, on the basketball playgrounds of Roxbury and Mission Hill by Will Blaylock, who was an outstanding player from Boston. I think this kid's going to be a Big East star when it's all said and done. Into the Big East all rookie team, as yeah. was Lamb. I think he'll blossom, Dave, as Kemba Walker leaves because there'll be more responsibility on his shoulders. And speaking of that, Kemba Walker very well could be playing in his last Big East championship. He was announced on senior day, even though he's a junior. That we're told had nothing to do with basketball. He's on schedule to graduate, but good chance that he will not come back and will just go to the NBA. And here he draws a charge and took a shot in doing so from Tony Freeland. Well, I think in, in to Fran's point about the development of players under Jim Calhoun, think of a guy like Hilton Armstrong who's making some money in the NBA, started his first couple years, didn't play a ton at UConn. Jim Calhoun will tell you when it's time to go. And so it's time for Kemba to go because in all, he's a first round draft choice. This is not the strongest class. I know you think there's yep. about six guys from Europe that'll be exactly. in the mix. So. First round, yep. But I, I do think it's not a strong class and it probably behooves him you know he's had such a good year from start to finish that his stock is at a very high level right now. 17 foul on DePaul. The charge by Freeland is second, but a player control foul, so no free throws. Connecticut has made six of its last seven. And it was a one-point game about four minutes ago. And all of them coming in the paint again. They just continue to dominate that area. And it's with their guard play, not their post play. Looked like it hit the foot of Young, and a foul is called. 
as Morgan tried to dive for the basketball. Got to appreciate the hustle, though, not just by him, but the way DePaul is playing. You talked about that earlier, Doris, and how hard the Blue Demons play despite just one win. Well, all of their players would tell you, as you see the pressure being applied by Young, and look at this. Give up your body. Are they working hard? And to a man, these guys in DePaul will tell you, even though the results don't show it and the wins and losses, which is how most fans identify with success, they're better. They're improving yeah. on a daily basis. And I like that he's got that. I think it takes some courage, Fran, to go with your system and know that yes. you, know, you could get blown out by 25 points. You've got to be pretty solid in who you are as a guy to know, okay, I might get my head handed to me, but I'm putting my system in this year no matter what. And a long-term contract doesn't hurt that yeah. either. <laughs> because right. they, they brought Oliver Purnell to, to DePaul precisely because he has been a program builder started at Radford and everywhere he's been Dave it's been slow start lose games and eventually an NCAA tournament appearance free throws are good so it's a 16 point lead a lot of people that when Purnell took the job at DePaul said why would you leave Clemson yeah. to take the job at DePaul well you know but obviously they've got tradition <laughs> they a great place to recruit absolutely yep well, you know what else? <laughs> he said, he, he said, I can't believe people were surprised. He goes, look at my history. I stayed for a little while. It's like Larry Brown. He's only yeah. going to give you a limited window. Walker's three, no good. He's over three from three-point land. Rebound by Faber. Well, one thing that hurts DePaul is where it plays. Allstate Arena, which is near the airport, not near campus, as the three goes from the corner, and Jim Calhoun doesn't like it. Kelly drills the three, and it's a timeout by UConn. That's a 30 well, Jeremiah Kelly, one of those holdovers from the Jerry Wainwright era, who, as you guys have chronicled, continues to play hard. This young man is from Chicago. And, you know, you're exactly right, Dave. In fact, I've said this before. I think for DePaul to really take a next step, they've got to really think about building an on-campus facility. I don't care if it's six, seven, eight thousand people, but find some land in Lincoln Park. It's a great campus right downtown. And I think that would really solidify and skyrocket the growth of this program. But they've got the right guy, a program builder. Tonight championship we continues with the Big East Women's Championship. Notre Dame taking on number one Connecticut and Maya Moore. Then men's action at nine as Butler meets Milwaukee in the Horizon League Championship. You think Butler if it loses still goes to the big dance or no? You know that would be three losses to uh, to Milwaukee. So that would not be a, a good thing. You know what people do have remember that residue of success a year ago and the committee says it has nothing to do with this season but I don't know about that. Smith misses the jumper. The tip won't go by Oriaki, but the putback does. 13 that's, point lead. That's all you're asking for, Dave. I mean, you look at the live body, the active feet. He's quick. Why is he not in double digit rebounding? His answer keeps, I just need to be a more aggressive. Go <laughs> to it, big fella. You no, know, he's a great kid. Even when you talk to him, he's a, a smart kid, very well spoken, good kid. And sometimes it's not in your DNA. Got a foul inside on Connecticut. Well, watch him. He's just going to work on the left-hand side. Going to do a little pushing and shoving. This is the Big East, and that's okay. He just carves some space with those big shoulders. Oriaki picking up the foul there is first, and fourth on UConn, so Brandon Young will go to the line. You know what he needs, Dave? He needs a little Jeff Adrian like yeah. mean streak in him. That's what he needs. And you know what? Lowell's a hard scrabble town. You know, it's a hard nosed, blue collar town. But hey, to his credit, he also went out and grabbed 17 rebounds against Michigan State. So I think the key is can you do it every night? Yes. And that's what Jim Calhoun's looking for. Well, if Kemba Walker leaves like we think he's going to leave, and most people do, they're going to need him to do that next year, or they're not going to win a lot of games. Oriaki gets the rebound there. Do you agree with that? No, absolutely. But I, I also think the development of these young guys is going to really, you know, help this help this team. I think Lamb and Napier are going to be an all-league backcourt by the time they're juniors or seniors. Giffey has given them some good games. He's a freshman as well from Germany. Here's another freshman, Napier. And then Roscoe Smith, another Frosch. Shot clock down to seven Lamb, who is so long. Smith can't get the putback, got it back though, and is fouled. By Faber, that's two on him. 19 foul. Connecticut was picked 10th preseason. And they finished ninth, going 9-9, nine nine, got off to a 
Great start. It's going to be interesting. We've had some announcements in terms of defensive player of the year most improved. Went to Rick Jackson, Dwight Hardy, respectively. We'll get the player of the year announced today. Kemba Walker was all Big East first team, but most people don't think he's going to win the player of the year. That it's likely to go to Ben Hansbro. Interesting, because Walker may be a first team All-American, yet not win player of the year in his own league. Well, it is interesting, and I think the reason for that is because the national media doesn't really zero in on all of the great seasons some of these Big East guys have had. And Kemba was so good early in Maui, and it's almost propelled him. It's like winning the Iowa caucuses in the New Hampshire yes. primary, you know? <laughs> you build momentum early, and then they can propel you. But there's no question he's had an unbelievable year. And what you love about him is the fact that Doris, he's improved, you know, 11 points a game the first two years to 23 this year. Here's Young off the dribble, and Young showing off his skill. That's a two. Six points for Brandon Young. He averages 12 points per game. Came to the All-Big East rookie team, led all rookies in assists. Young did as Lamb takes off, soaring in for the dunk. Well, That's again, 15 first-half points for Lamb. Sorry, Doris. No, just all the points in the paint, Brandon. They're just racking them up at this point. Remember, the ball's not going to change that style, so you're going to get chances to, to attack in the transition versus the pressure. Freeland facing up on Oriaki. Now Drew for three. Freeland got the rebound. Can't score over Oriaki. Looks a lot more active defensively today. Walker in transition. Lamb too far into the hoop. Roscoe Smith with the easy two. Connecticut on top, 38-22, behind 15 points from Jeremy Lamb, who hurt his knee. And their last regular season game against Notre Dame is showing no ill effects of that, having a terrific first half. And Napier fouled by Young. Now Connecticut continues to dominate the painted area. A little bit different than in the past, say, with the Mecca Oka four. But offensive rebounding has been a part of this. Then Kemba gets inside, makes a nice little adjustment. Jeremy Lamb, despite that bum right knee, it doesn't look like it's hurting him today. Oriaki sat on the bench to start, looking good. And Mr. Lamb, left, right, doesn't matter. Right now, back to Dave. Back in New York City, Connecticut on top of DePaul, 38-22. Assistant coach Kevin Ali, former UConn standout and NBA guard, playing a big role in the development of Kemba Walker. Kemba Walker and a lot of these young guards as well. And this is a guy you talk about first-round picks and high picks, lottery picks like Okafor, Ben Gordon. He is the king of the 10-day contract, 13 years in the league. And uh, what you love about Kevin Ali is was not drafted, found himself to be in the league that long and has now come back to campus to work with guys like Shabazz Napier and Ken Kemba Walker. A great addition to the staff. And think about some of the longest tenured guys in the history of the NBA. Cliff Robinson. Yes. Connecticut grad. Yep. Kevin Ollie makes Danielle a career Marshall. with limited skills. Mm -hmm. Danielle Marshall. It's extraordinary. They get there Ray Allen. and they stay there. Yeah. Look at Ray Allen. Ray Allen looks like he's 28. You know, every program in the Big East has a certain culture about it. And for, for Connecticut, it's always been a culture of toughness. And that toughness permeates down from the guy who's in charge, by the way. Ray tells a funny story of uh, being recruited by one guy, Jim Calhoun. And the first practice he goes to, he said, boy, oh boy, he goes, he turned into a different human being. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> I've been there. What happened to that nice guy that recruited me? Here's Coombs McDaniel all the way to the basket. Missed the layup, but the follow dunk by Oriaki makes it a 20-point UConn lead. Well, so you don't st start Alex Oriaki. Maybe a, a little bit of a message, and he responds with eight points, nine rebounds, and could have his first double-digit rebounding before we head into the locker room here. He's got five offensive rebounds. Faber in the lane. You see DePaul with just four points in the paint to 24 for UConn. Good look. Lamb down. Court will take it in and now has 17 points. Timeout to Paul. Now freshman to freshman. Napier and 
Jeremy Lamb. They've had great experience this year. Oliver Purnell just got a technical foul. I think he's feeling like his guy took a hit on one end and he worked hard on John Gaffney to earn that technical foul. Well, I think he had a point because Alex Oriaki had that and I was watching and he didn't go vertical. He went down on the hands of the shooter, Chris Faber. And, you know, I, Oliver Purnell sending a message even to the officials like we, we may lose this game, yeah. but we're not going to we're not going to take anything because we're number 16 in the league. And it's good strategy. He's done this before. He knows what he's doing. He's just making a point to everybody in the building. Take a look now. Now watch Oriaki. The ball's going to go inside, and you're going to see his hands come down. He's not going to go vertical. He's going to come right down, right there. See, that's a foul. And Oliver Purnell is not going to allow his team to continue to play hard if he's not going to coach hard. So Kemba Walker will shoot the free throws. Connecticut on a 10 0 run. Walker will shoot two. Saying, look, I've been coaching for 25 years, and I, you know, it's funny. Whenever you've been at the top of the league, Dave, and I remember being at the top of the league in certain places, and you're winning games, and you watch film, and you go, boy, those guys, those guys that we were supposed to beat, refereeing wasn't very good. And then when you're at the bottom of the league, you're going, man, we need every call. Yes, right. And you're fighting. You got no margin for error, and that's what he's doing right now. He's fighting for his team. You, you had great success as a coach. I think you told me the most losses you ever had in a year was 14. I mean, how grueling is that? Because most coaches will tell you the losses far outweigh the joy you get from a win. So in the, in the year you lose was it 14 games, how yeah. hard was that? Well, you know, it's hard, but in Oliver Purnell's case, he already knows that no matter he's lost, he's going to lose 24 games this year, guys. Brandon okay. Young, by the way, by the way, with a three-point opportunity yeah. here. Nice drive to the lane. That's he, a recruit of Purnell. Freshman. And by the way, he got the foul call. Yes, he did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you're saying it was a good technical. Well, again, it sends a message. You know, I've been coaching a long time. I've had a lot of success at four of the programs. Don't treat us like we're a bottom feeder right now. And it's a good message because they're going to get good someday and they're going to get calls. Uh, and I don't, you know, it's all sub subliminal now. You know, the officiating is always better than average. But subliminally, sometimes the officials officiate to what the expectations are of who's supposed to win the game. Beverly with a handoff of Kwandu was on the baseline, so a turnover by Connecticut. One of the places, Fran, that you had a success, Doris was talking about St. John. How about the year that the Red Storm had led by Steve Lavin in his first season? Phenomenal. You know, what I love about St. John's right now is they play so hard, and uh, you got to give Steve and his staff. I mean, Mike Dunlap has done a great job. Extraordinary job. Yeah, you know, that's, that's that zone defense. I got a lot of notes on that matchup zone defense that Steve has allowed Mike to implement into the program, but I love the passion and energy that St. John's has played with this year. And to Steve's credit, he's credited Norm Roberts for leaving behind a, a high character group of guys. Here's Napier in the corner, left alone, didn't pull the trigger. Booms McDaniel into the lane, three seconds call. The Quandu was in there for, for about eight. See, now that's a Quandu's turnover. I thought the last one where he traveled was Danelle Beverly's turnover. He put a Quandu in a bad position. Olander will come into the game replacing a Quandu. St. John's was the hottest team in the Big East until losing at uh, Seton Hall on Thursday. Doris, what do you think of their chances, not only here in New York, but also the NCAA tournament? Well, I, first of all, I think they're going to have a great crowd behind them here, and it's been a long time since you could say that, and I think that's exciting. It's like when the Knicks are good, there's a little that's different vibe in the city, and I like their chances. I think they're athletic. I think they're very good. And I think the thing that Steve has done so well is just say, invest yourself in the defense and rebounding. Lose yourself in those two aspects, and the offense will come a little bit easier, and, and the position he has put Dwight Hardy to, to, to be in to succeed has been impressive as well. It has, and I'll tell you, that style is going to be difficult for teams in the NCAA tournament, especially if they get to the second game of the weekend and only have one day to prepare. Nice job by Brandon Young cleaning things up underneath and putting it in for DePaul. 25 seconds left in the half. Here's Lamb. And Olander had it blocked by Faber. Four on two for DePaul. Freeland will take it in and fouled by Beverly. 
See, and this is what you're talking about. They're down 18, but they're still pressing after baskets. They're still getting back and hustling. Here's the block by Faber. That's a great block by Chris Faber. That is right on the basketball. But that, Doris, you mentioned it earlier. They keep playing hard, and that's what a coach can ask for. They are undermanned, and all you can ask is ask for at this time of year is effort. Undermanned, undersized, but compete. That's all you that's all you ask for. So Freeland at the line shooting two. Kemba Walker back on the floor for Connecticut. Walker two of seven from the field seven points over three from behind the arc. And, you know, the win here by Connecticut if you advance it puts you up against a Georgetown team that just looks so drastically different without Chris Wright. Connecticut beat Georgetown in their only meeting this year. That was in mid-February, 78-70. One out of two for Freeland, so Connecticut can hold now for the final shot. But they could have held for the final shot last possession and took it in and had a turnover. Uh, we have, we've seen everything. Now we see a little 1-3-1 by Oliver Purnell. He's going to throw the kitchen sink at Connecticut today. Here's Napier with six seconds. Walker with five. Napier got a good look, too strong. Lamb cannot put it back. Just his second missed shot from the field. Six of eight, his career high, 24 points. He had 17 in the first half. One game after, spraining his knee against Notre Dame. So it is all Connecticut, 45-20 over to Paul at halftime. And it's the Cisco Halftime Report now with John Saunders and Doug. I am New York, young man. This week, on this court, the stakes like my skyscrapers are higher, the glare like my light brighter. If you're afraid, you'll fail. But stand tall like me, and you will prevail. Here, in the Big East Championship, and we welcome you back to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. The 2011 Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Connecticut led by as many as 23 with two minutes to go. And it's a 17-point lead as we get you ready to start the second half. With Doris Burke, Fran Fischella, I'm Dave Pash. It was actually a one-point game midway through the first half. I know out there some of you might be saying, big deal. It's a Big East game, and that's how most Big East games are. But this is DePaul, a team with one win. They struggled after that. It was all Connecticut. Yeah, and for Connecticut, you remember how grouchy Jim Calhoun was? Not that he ever gets grouchy about the rebounding Never. the last five games. 28-13. And they're grabbing 50% of their misses, Doris, and that's turning into scoring opportunities close to the rim. Well, points in the paint, they dominated. And this is what has been the staple of Jim Calhoun's program since he arrived in Storrs, Connecticut. And watch this play. A little entry pass to the post. Look at the options for Shabazz Napier. And the thing I might like best about this, outside of the pass, which is exceptional, all five guys in white jerseys were eyeing the ball handle. They look like NBA guys. Is it my shot yet? <laughs> And here are our stats brought to you by American Eagle 29% shooting for DePaul you guys talked about the rebound disparity and also plus 18 points of the paint no fast break points for DePaul 10 for UConn Kemba Walker by the way seven points two of seven shooting and over three from three Jeremy Lamb their leading score with 17 points in the first half Brandon Young led DePaul with 11. Blue Demons without their best player, Cle uh, Cleveland Melvin, who's out for the year with a thumb injury, missed the final three games of the regular season. Freeland underneath, and a good start for DePaul here in the second half. They'll keep fighting hard, you know that, with but Oliver Purnell's team. Absolutely, and you know on every basket, they're going to set up that full-court pressure. Walker tried to hit Smith in transition, turned it over. And Young goes behind the back, lost the dribble, though. And a push underneath on UConn. On Coombs McDaniel, his second personal. Jim Calhoun seeking win number 299 in the Big East. He's at 298 regular season in Big East tournament wins. There's a lot of hard hats all over the garden right now. Sometimes I feel like Coach Calhoun's staff should wear hard hats. <laughs> 
Now you remember the shot that Roscoe Smith took with about what, 10 seconds left against Texas when he just hoisted it full length of the court and the look on Calhoun's face when that took place. Connecticut ended up winning that game at Texas. As we had a foul called here in DePaul. But take a look. I mean, this was the one when you're watching. Everybody watching said, are you kidding me? What's he doing? Yeah, he just had a brain freeze, really. Take a look. He just throws it. <laughs> That's what a freshman does. You know, I... You <laughs> That's probably one of the strangest things Jim Calhoun has seen in his uh, long and successful head coaching career. Now McGuire used to say the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. Sophomores. So we, we've been saying all all day that that <laughs> Oliver Purnell doesn't stop co coaching regardless of score. Neither does Jim Calhoun. He coaches like his next contract is on the game he's playing. Walker now with nine points as Connecticut's lead is back to 17. And a turnover by DePaul. Walker into the lane, little jumper won't go. Rebound by Jimmy Drew. Winner of this game will play Georgetown tomorrow at noon. Three-pointer on the money for Brandon Young, who's a good-looking freshman out of Baltimore. I don't think this experience by Brandon Young is not going to help him in his four-year career. Swatted away by Oriaki, but they like the hustle by Young going right back at UConn. No he'll go to the line. Yeah, I mean, there's no quitting these guys. Brandon Young, you just keep playing because you you know what? This is a matter of pride if you're DePaul. Absolutely, Doris. This is what you call Charm City or Baltimore toughness right here. Brandon Young, Cleveland Melvin, two Baltimore kids that Oliver Purnell can certainly help build his program around. And Oriaki picking up his third foul, second on Connecticut here in the half. Young, a 71% free throw shooter. I always felt in a game like this when I had the lead that it was really important at halftime to really make sure that your team understood that the first three minutes of the second half was critical because if you can jump on a team, get a 7-0 run right out of the gate, and you go from 15 to 22, sometimes the game can end right there. But you allow a team to climb back in, and all of a sudden now you're in for a little bit more of a dogfight than you expected. 12-point game. Hard to keep your 18 to 22-year-olds thinking like, yep. you know, this is not a game any longer. And they're making some casual mistakes here. Freeland is fouled in an opportunity to get it down to 10. You can tell that the level of focus and intensity in the white jersey is not there. They're too casual with their passes, too casual with their approach. This is a dangerous pass against a diamond pressure where the trap comes there. You are making that pass right at your opponent's basket. Third foul on Coombs McDaniel, third on Connecticut in the half. And now Tony Freeland, who's a 58% free throw shooter, but coming off a 25 point game against Syracuse, gets the first one to drop. You know, you, when you look at this guy, Tony Freeland, he's got the body type of a guy that was an outstanding player here. You talk about long NBA careers, Ty Corbin, who's now the head coach of the Utah Jazz, who apprenticed under Jerry Sloan. But not the same level of talent, but same style of play. You know, there was some talk when the move was made last year with Jerry Wainwright that Corbin would be a candidate for that job, but they wanted a, a, someone who has had head coaching experience, especially in college. It worked out pretty well for Corbin with uh, Sloan's midseason leave from Utah. As Walker misses the bank shot, got his own rebound and is fouled. That was big that he got his own miss. Otherwise, DePaul's coming back down the court looking to get it to single figure. That's a toughness play. See, that's a, that's a guy who understands my team is not putting points on the board. They're making a run at us. It's time for me to make a play. Good pull up on the first one. Then he just out. Yeah, that's out working people. He's got inside position. Good up fake to draw the defender. Third foul on Faber. We talked in the first half about his struggles here at the Garden. Went just four of 16 against St. John's in a loss this season last year against St. John's in the Big East tournament he was four of 17 from the field. Well he better get used to playing in Madison Square Garden if he, if he, if he elects to come out early and plays in the NBA he'll be back here a few times. 12 point lead as he gets both free throws he's got 11 now seven of eight at the foul line.
Drew with a good look to Faber for the finish. Back to a 10 point game. Napier gets it across, breaking that pressure, and now he'll set things up. Connecticut 21 and 9, 9 and 9 in the Big East. And the 9 seed ranked 19th in the country. See, if you're a young guy watching DePaul play right now and they're recruiting you, and they tell you we're going to press and run, you can take it to the bank. Walker starting to take over for Connecticut. Yeah, he, he understands what the time of the game and, and what DePaul's doing. And how about his feel? He's just keeping his dribble, just trying to get to the spot on the floor. He's getting there. He's looking over to smile. I see you, Kemba. <laughs> that was a pretty bad yeah. move. <laughs> what a smile on that guy. Meanwhile, Napier, you saw him there wincing. He took a shot right in the face as he was coming back down court on defense. All of Connecticut's points in the half by Kemba Walker, six. Tough shot in the lane by Freeland, got his own miss, back up strong, and he'll go to the line. It's on a Kwandu. That's his first, fourth on UConn in the half. Now you love the effort. We talked about it from the very beginning of the game. DePaul undermanned and really uh, underdog. But Oliver Purnell, his team, they press, they run, they play hard, and right now they are attacking the offensive glass. May have a clock issue here. Unless maybe they're going back to see if there was a flagrant. Might have been a flagrant. Remember, we, we mentioned that after the basket by Walker, Napier got hit in the face by Jimmy Drew and that may be what they're looking at here to see if there was a flagrant a thrown elbow in that situation. UConn leading DePaul by 12. Again winner will play Georgetown tomorrow. Take a look here Jimmy Drew 23 in blue. Ooh. Well, there was certainly contact. The question is, was it inadvertent or did Jimmy Drew take a detour up the court? Didn't look like a, an elbow there, though, from, from Drew. If anything, it looked like there was more after contact by or maybe a late reaction by Napier. Well, the two officials in the replay did not seem to be aware of that part of the play. It would have been the... the, the Oh, official wow. out high. See, because look at look at you know the two officials. They're not looking at all in that direction when that transpires. You know, but why would why would Oliver Purnell be calling attention to it unless he felt that Napier got in the way of Jimmy Drew there? That just looks like inadvertent contact down the floor. John Gaffney is uh, done doing his work. Let's see what he rules here. He's going to come over and give uh, Fran the info. All right, so incidental contact says John Gaffney, so. No, John Gaffney no came flag. over. Yeah, he said incidental contact, which is what the replay seemed to show. We appreciate the fact that these guys have been uh, very conscious of making sure we're aware of exactly what they're looking for. We appreciate the clarity. So Tony Freeland at the line, a chance to get it back to 10. Freeland with seven points, five of six at the free throw line. Talked about Oliver Purnell, Dave, and building the program, and they've got a terrific recruiting class already in place to go with some of these outstanding freshmen. And future Hall of Famer Barry Larkin, his son, who's an outstanding point guard, Shane Larkin, is going to be at the Paul freshman this year, and his team just lost to Austin Rivers' team in the 6A title game in Florida. When you think about DePaul and it's a rich tradition, I know that you scouted Mike in back in the day, Fran. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Couldn't go left. You know, the right hand jump hook was hard to stop. Basket by Aquandu, but even going back just in the last few years, you had Sammy Mejia, Wilson Chandler, who's starring for the Denver Nuggets with DePaul. Uh, Terry Cummings and had that great run in the 80s. 
But unfortunately, young players nowadays, you got to tell them who Michael Jordan was, let alone Mark McGuire and guys like Terry Cummins and Gary Garland, all those great players that Ray, Ma Ray Meyer had in the late 70s and early 80s. There's Walker off the screen from a Quandu. It's much more assertive offensively here in the second half, and it is paying oh, off for oh, Connecticut. Oh. He keeps smiling <laughs> over here, and he puts his hands up like, yeah, I look good, don't I? Yes, sir, you sure do, Kemba. <laughs> it's eight and a half for Walker, 15 for the game. What yeah. a smile on that guy. I'll tell you what, that's, that's the kind of attention that I was all too sadly lacking for me when I was an undergraduate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a three by Jeremiah Kelly. Shot 40% in conference games from behind the arc. His second three today, back to a 12-point game. Numbers for Yukon Walker again. You see, this is a point in the game where you go, uh-oh. You're all over Pernell, you're thinking, uh-oh, here goes. Here Why are you doing in the first half, though? Well, we talked about it early. You know, they give up 18 points a game in transition to Paul, and the one thing you don't want to have happen is have Kemba Walker with a running start 94 feet. Now he was passing when he get into the lane in the first mm -hmm. half. Now he's taking it to the rim. You were kind of surprised he was passing Dave and I was thinking you know he's still going to end up with 20. Well he, he gave it up the last play <laughs> against Notre Dame too and it didn't work out very well as Napier gets the basket and Walker started that on defense. Remember Connecticut was down late to the Irish Walker had an opportunity to take the shot instead passed it up tried to hit Beverly and Connecticut turned it over. Over the backboard, it'll be UConn ball when we come back to the garden. Uh, Kemba Walker starting to play like the first team All America and maybe the biggest player of the year. It's not all said and done. We'll find out at 5 30. The mid range game has been solid. He's always had an outstanding, outstanding handle. And there's a smile. Yep, we see you, Kemba. You look pretty good. This telecast available in 3D on ESPN 3D, brought to you by Sony. Every game in the 2011 Big East Championship delivered in 3D. Justin Kutcher doing the game for ESPN today in 3D, along with Bob Wenzel. See one of the 3D cameras there. UConn ball leading by 16. Kemba Walker with 10 points since intermission. And DePaul got within 10 on two occasions this half as Napier gets hit again, again incidentally as well. No foul call that remains UConn ball. Little run and jump. Good hands by Morgan. I mentioned earlier, guys, when I've coached against Oliver Purnell in the past, he always comes up with something out of a timeout that you haven't seen. That time they went from zone press to a little run and jump pressure. Freeland working on a Quandu out to Drew, short with a three, but got his own miss. From the corner, it's Kelly who loves that spot. The ball back within 13, not going away. There's three Big East wins the last three years. One of those coming here in the first round of the tournament. A foul by Drew, his third. Now uh, UConn making news off the court as uh, Jim Calhoun and the coaching staff making the front page of the Hartford Current because of NCAA violations. And the latest report is that the school will not appeal the sanctions of three years probation, three years of scholarship reductions, uh, restrictions on recruiting. And also there's a three game Big East suspension for Jim Calhoun for next year. Now he can appeal that that is separate from what the university does from those other sanctions and there's been no decision made or at least not announced yet as to what Calhoun will do there. I don't know why they should appeal the NCAA sanctions because I think they got off light. I think they're very fortunate. What about the coach. Do you think he got off light. Or was uh, that. I think I think Jim did. And I think that uh, I've said this before about Bruce Pearl. If you violate NCAA rules as a as a sitting college coach 
Instead of taking away conference games, non-conference games, they ought to take away NCAA tournament games. He needs to let it go. He needs to accept so. responsibility yep. and not appeal it. You, you've got to take responsibility that you're the head of that program. Right. He came out with a statement afterward admitting that. He, he said it was the lowest point of his career. He always prided himself on the fact that his program won national championships without cheating. But you know how they say your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Jim Calhoun is a South Boston kid with a chip on his shoulder and he remains that guy. And here's his statement. As the leader of the Connecticut basketball program and an ambassador of the university, the buck stops with me, no qualifications. And then he, I fully acknowledge that we as a staff made some mistakes. Stop there. Jeff yep. Jacobs, as you see that you just read on here, mm -hmm. Jeff Jacobs, the outstanding columnist for the Hartford Current said, you know, this is a prideful guy, yep. but stop. This was all you needed to say and move on. We are a nation of second chances. We understand the mistakes are made. When you own up to it, we'll, we'll gladly give you that second chance. Yeah, and when you've been in coaching as long as he has, and knowing the, uh, the, the nature of the NCAA rules, you know, you're, you're going to break the rules at some point, inadvertently or otherwise. And I think that, uh, again, they got off lightly, and they need to move on, and I think it'll... I think they're okay now. They've gotten through the tough time. Morgan was fouled shooting a three, and he gets to Paul back with an 11. Here's a question I have about it. Does it, you know, fuel a competitive fire in a 68-year-old man? How much longer does Jim Calhoun want to go? Basket by Kwandu in transition. His 25th year at Connecticut. 844 total wins. He, he said this has been one of his favorite years. He, he's loved coaching this team. That video doesn't look like a guy yeah. who wants to <laughs> slow down. No, you think six of the top seven scorers are freshmen and sophomores, and he has done a great coaching job with these guys. Drew hits a three. This ain't over yet. DePaul again back within ten. Now, Doris, you said at the very beginning of the game, it's a matter of belief for DePaul. They believe in Oliver Purnell. And they are playing hard despite the fact that they are a 1 in 17 Big East team. And a foul called by Kelly. As DePaul is now four of six in the second half from three point land. Well, he's reacting to this. Mr. Drew, former walk on, drains another three, gets him within 10, and he's saying, What in the heck is going <laughs> on over here? Second foul, meanwhile, on the other end on Kelly. How many times has Jim Calhoun looked right in the direction of George Blaney? when he's mad about something because Blaney knows what he's going through as a former head coach and he's taken over at times for Calhoun when he's been ill or had to deal with family matters. See what I mean about the hard hats? If you're on that step, you might want to buckle up with that hard hat. Kind of like working for Gary Williams like yeah. I used to. <laughs> but you know what? Just like Gary Williams, the greatest strength is their intensity yes. and competitiveness. Absolutely. That's Here's why. true for three. This is big if it goes down, but couldn't hit it. That would have made it seven. But as it is, UConn by 10 in the 9-16 matchup. Game one, day one of the Big East Championship. Winner to play Georgetown tomorrow. Kemba Walker trying to take him there. He's got 12 in the second half. He, he does a magnificent job of understanding when his guys needs a bucket. And, and the other thing he does is on that triple drive, he looks like he's going at it at a tough angle, but he always gets his shoulders turned toward the box, that square on the backboard. So important to give yourself a chance. Drew, good look to Freeland. Couldn't handle the pass, but there was a foul on Beverly for reaching in, his first and the sixth on UConn. Well, you know what, guys? Kimba Walker has a sense of the moment. 28th time this season he's had 12 or more points in a half. He's been a bull today. In fact, he's been like that bull that's down on Wall Street. By the way, markets up today, Doris. Up next, New Jersey invades New York as two teams from Jersey cross over the bridge into the city. Seton Hall and Rutgers. Scarlet Knights and Pirates come up next in the 12-13 matchup. We see Rutgers arriving. Their opponent, Seton Hall, playing its best basketball of the year. Wins against St. John's and Marquette in their last two games. They'll look to beat Rutgers and try to get a rematch with St. John's tomorrow. You see the four teams that get one by. There are also four teams that get two buys. Syracuse, Pittsburgh, the one uh, four teams, also Louisville and Notre Dame with the double box. So you got three guys, Fran, and you'll know this experience. Kevin Willard, Mike Rice, and Steve Lavin, all of whom will walk in here as head coaches to the Big East Tournament for the first time. Do you remember what it felt Absolutely. like? Absolutely. Yeah. Nothing like it, especially if you have a connection, connection to New York City like I did, Kevin Willard certainly, and 
You know, Mike Rice played at Fordham, so uh, he knows well what the meaning of coaching in this tournament uh, is all about. And it's, uh, it's fun the first time you do it until you realize you're playing somebody pretty good. And you're looking down <laughs> at Coach Bayheim, exactly. Coach Calhoun. <laughs> do you guys see the that there's a possibility that there's a team seated below six or seven that can win the championship this year because we might have 11 in the dances. Kelly hits a three to make it a nine point game. I don't know that you, I don't think we're going to see a team win five games if that's, if that's what you're asking. How about a steal by Freeland? Oh, he blew the layup. The putback is good though by Moses Morgan, and it's a seven point game. Look at this, they continue to relentlessly come after UConn with that pressure. Coombs McDaniel gets the bounce. You just get the sense though that whenever Connecticut wants to, it can put together a 10-0 run. It was a one-point game midway through the first half. UConn went on a 15-0 run. And can DePaul keep scoring to stay in the game? They only scored 59 points in their last game and gave up over 100 as Morgan misfires. Here's Walker in transition. Beautiful move by Kimba Walker. Well, that's end-to-end -end play because he did a great job challenging the jump shot without fouling and then avoiding the contact on the offensive end as well. Two cases where you could picked up a foul on either side and you're smart and you didn't. That's where Doris, his greatest maturity has taken place this year, Dave. This guy's a Maserati in city traffic, and he only went at one speed his freshman and sophomore years. He knows how to gear down now once he gets into the paint area. All Big East first team member. All of the players on the All Big East first team were guards, something criticized by Syracuse coach Jim Bayon. He thought Rick Jackson was the defensive player of the year in the conference, should have been first team All Big East. Well, you think about Rick Jackson's numbers. Obviously, he's, he, he's made a case for it. He led the league in rebounding and blocked shots. And it's a little strange to see only perimeter players. Yeah. My question, I guess, would be who would you take off? And that's a hard question to answer. Morgan misses a three. But you know what? I thought he was maybe the most consistent. Maybe Ben Hansborough would fall into this category. I thought Rick Jackson was the most consistent player in the league yes. from start to finish. Walker with a floater. No, but he'll go to the line. Kemba Walker, Ashton Gibbs, Austin Freeman, who was the preseason player of the year, Dwight Hardy, who was recently named most improved player this year in Big East, and you see the six, uh, Marshawn Brooks, the leading scorer in the Big East this year. If, if you're going to argue for Rick Jackson, I think yeah. you could make an equal argument for Brad Wanamaker. Because you talk to any coach in the league, and I'll, I'll go to a quote by Mike Bray, who said, there may be no more respected guy in the Big East amongst other coaches and other players than Brad Wanamaker. And I said it, Ashton Gibbs and Brad Wanamaker, one was going to take votes yeah. away from the other for either first or second team or even player of the year. Well, you like Brad Wanamaker's ability. He's a double figure scored, and he's averaging five rebounds, five assists as well. So he did everything for Jamie Dixon. And isn't it interesting that winning teams have guys like Brad Wanamaker that don't get the credit of a leading scorer like a Marshawn Brooks, Ben Hansborough, Austin Freeman? Young cutting down the lane again. You see the skill of Brandon Young. The 10 point game again. Now, and they're playing without a guy that could be the freshman of the year in Cleveland Melvin Look and at a three point opportunity for Jimmy Drew another steal by DePaul and you got to give Oliver Purnell and the Blue Demons a ton of credit they got seven wins one in the Big East all year and well, they're in UConn all it can handle right now relentless absolutely relentless this is their diamond pressure they're looking for a trap again a casual pass in a tough angle UConn is not passing the ball well against that pressure at all well, Doris that's an excellent breakdown of what's happening on the court and off the court it's what we talked about belief in Oliver Purnell that the system will work once the players are in place and you got to give these guys credit who've been through a lot of losing that they're still playing their hearts out Drew gets the bounce it is a seven point game again and there's plenty of time on the clock but can DePaul come up with the stop once UConn gets it across half court as Freeland is called for the foul he thought instead there should have been a turnover but once they break the pressure can DePaul get a stop 
Now that's a question that you when you when you play Oliver's teams they are much better in terms of pressure in, in, the, in the full court and a half court. This is how they play. You want to get them in a half court game. Young picked up the foul his second and Smith pushed again. Well, that looked like a touch foul there. Morgan picking up his third and that puts UConn in the bonus 17 foul. So Roscoe Smith, the 76% free throw shooter, will go to the line for a one and one. UConn's facing a lot of different pressures. They're, they're sometimes face guarding the two guys trying to make yes. the catch on the baseline. They're sometimes in the diamond looking for a quick trap. The guy will come off the ball. They run a run and jump. They're just fixing things up, working hard, just trying to keep UConn off balance. And this has been going on, Doris, for most of Oliver Purnell's career. Oh, yeah. That's why yesterday in our production meetings, Dave, when some of some of the people asked me, is he going to win it to Paul? I said, absolutely. I mean, th this is, you think about it. You said something interesting, Dave, early. Why would he leave Clemson to go to DePaul? And there were people who wondered why he would leave Dayton to go to a dead-end job like Clemson seven years ago. So, you know, given the fact that DePaul's got that city town and there's a tradition you're looking at the implementation of a style that's going to be really effective when even better players than these guys come to DePaul and keep in mind the kinds of guys that need to be effective on the front line think about the active athletic forwards he had at Clemson who yep. could be the front of that pressure and bring big traps big possession here for DePaul with the ball down nine nearing eight minutes to go DePaul making its three-point shots in the second half and then getting some conventional three-point opportunities with the fouls. Young missing, and now Walker in transition. Look out. Walker hands it off. Napier reverse layup. Has Kemba had a hand either scoring himself or assisting on every big bucket here in the second half? Seems that way. Got three assists, five rebounds, 22 points. On the floor, Drew. Tied up and wait, no, Drew got a timeout in first. So timeout to Paul. It'll leave him with one. Well, you love Jimmy Drew's energy and effort today, but the one guy has certainly brought his energy and effort is the guy that's like a speeding bullet. Kemba Walker slicing and dicing and giving up the rock to a teammate. Kemba Walker's back home in New York City. He's at Madison Square Garden. He's directing traffic. Welcome back to New York City, and we are in Manhattan, a place that will test your mettle, and the Big East will test your ability to handle adversity. And the thing I like best about what DePaul has done is the approach. Look at this pursuit of the basketball. Multiple times they have hit the floor to compete for plays. Connecticut is the more talented team by far, but DePaul has scrapped and clawed and done a nice job keeping themselves in this basketball game. Down 11 with the ball. Kemba Walker with 15 second half points and 22 for the game to lead all scores. Brandon Young has 18 to top DePaul. And Drew's three blocked by Lamb. Walker with a great look ahead. And Lamb with the basket. He's got 19. Kemba didn't have time. He, that play couldn't have been completed if he caught that. He had to make it the way he made it to give his teammate a chance to get an easy opportunity. How about 20 to nothing fast break points now wow. in favor of UConn. Morgan with a little one-handed floater in the lane. Winner moves on to play Georgetown tomorrow at noon. Three more games from the Garden today, including Seton Hall Rutgers up next as Walker is fouled in backcourt. Now we'll get a one and one. That's the 18 foul on uh, DePaul. Well, DePaul, you're right, Doris. They're coming with the effort and energy, but you know what? Jim Calhoun's got some feisty young guys. Jeremy Lamb, Shabazz Napier, Roscoe Smith. They're in New York City for the first time, and they're getting it done. Back in Manhattan, where Connecticut leads DePaul, shooting 73% this half, but trailing because of the hustle of the Blue Demons, playing scrappy, getting turnovers with full court pressure, and here at the Garden, DePaul, despite just one Big East win this year, hanging around. Down 11 to Connecticut. 
Despite that great shooting by the Huskies and the play of Kemba Walker since intermission, Walker, in his first two Big East tournament games in his career, shot 23% from the field. And today, shooting 50%. And has 22 points. Most of those coming since halftime, 15. You know, you love the development of Kemba Walker. You think back two years ago, he was a freshman on a Final Four team with A.J. Price and Craig Austry, Jerome Dyson. He only averaged 11 points a game his first two years. Lane violation here on UConn, so DePaul will get the ball. But you just love the way he has continued to improve and mature, and basically, Doris put a young team on his back this season. Well, he got him out of the gates quickly in Maui. What a sensational several days for Kemba Walker. You know, makes the biggest splash on the national stage, vaults himself into player of the year on the national scene. And you know, a young team, you need that. Yep. You, you got to get some confidence early, and he provided it. You talked about how they played in Maui v. Michigan State v. Kentucky as Walker scores again. They also have wins over Tennessee at Texas. Harvard, that's a good win. Harvard's probably going dancing as an offensive foul here is called because Walker drew the charge on Brandon Young, third on Young. But Connecticut also with wins over Villanova and Georgetown. So they got all these great wins, yet they're the ninth seed in the Big East, which tells you something about this league. And the defense by Kemba Walker, it's another way to set the tone for your team. Well, when you go into a street fight with Superman, and that's basically what these freshmen have done this year, you know, that you're going to gain confidence. And Again, I think when you look at Napier and Roscoe, uh, you know, uh, Jeremy Lamb, Roscoe Smith, these guys all love playing with Kemba Walker. Walker with 24 points. He had eight 30 point games during the regular season. The school record is nine. And we mentioned that if UConn wins, it'll play Georgetown as Walker's call for the offensive foul here. Walker almost had a triple double against Georgetown this year 31 points, 10 assists, 7 rebounds. First foul on Walker there. He's the kind of kid, and you talk to anybody on the Connecticut staff, if he walks into a room, he's got a huge smile on his face, and he makes you feel better just by being there. Just a positive spirit. You know, and he doesn't have a sense of entitlement. You know, he backed up Corey Fisher in junior high, Edgar Sosa in high school, and then A.J. Price is a freshman at UConn, so. Jeremy Lamb called for a foul his second. And the 19 foul. We mentioned Seton Hall Rutgers coming up next. You got Villanova USF tonight. Speaking of Corey Fisher, will Villanova have Corey Stokes though? Did not play in their game against Pittsburgh over the weekend because of a hamstring injury suffered in practice. Also Marquette Providence tonight. Marquette, a big one for the Golden Eagles. You know the greatest thing about this league as it prepares you for the NCAA tournament, we know it wears you out. But you see every single style of play in this league. You know, you look at the Paul pressing and running. If Connecticut advances, they get to try to guard the Georgetown freelance motion offense. You know what's, what's interesting, guys? A lot of people say, oh, the Big East, it's too tough. They play too many games in the regular season. There are too many games in the Big East tournament. This hurts them in the NCAA tournament. But since 2007, Georgetown won the regular season and the Big East tournament and went to the Final Four. Last year, West Virginia won the Big East tournament and went to the Final Four. So it's not a given that you're going to get knocked out early if you have to play four days. Bobby Huggins would tell you that the close wins, they had three straight close wins here at the Big East tournament. He felt like that helped them in the NCAA tournament. Endure the pressure of close wins in the NCAA. Morgan stepped on the baseline. Well, I do think it affects you. I, I definitely think you look at Georgetown last year losing to Ohio U and Notre Dame losing to Old Dominion. I think it's feast or famine. You want to win the Big East tournament. Bobby Huggins told me a week ago that hearing Country Roads, yeah. you know, being sung in Madison Square Garden was one of the highlights of his career. You want to win the Big East title, but it also takes a lot out of you getting ready five days later. Coombs McDaniel gives Connecticut another basket in transition. Knocked out of bounds by UConn. It'll stay to Paul basketball. Now, 
I think maybe that's a reason you, you talked about some of those losses, even though West Virginia went to the Final Four. But you have those losses. Villanova almost lost in the first round, too, last year. Ended up losing to St. Mary's in the second round. Maybe that's why people are waiting to make a judgment about the Big East until they see what they do in the NCAA tournament this year. Well, I think the league reflects the larger storyline in college basketball, that the, the great teams just aren't out there. Another easy one in transition. Listen, could you see uh, a limited number, maybe just two teams from the Big East making it to the second weekend? Sure, but you could also see six or eight of those teams yeah. making it to the second weekend. A lot of it will come down to matchups and how healthy are you. You know, Villanova's coming apart at the seam, similar to what happened a year ago. Stokes has dealt with turf toe and, and a hamstring in the second half of the season. How healthy are they? Well, it's a great point because as a Big East coach, you've got to be very conscious of keeping your team fresh mentally and physically. Not only at the end of the regular season, but into the conference tournament, and then the third season, the NCAA tournament. Well, Philosophically, just picked up his fourth. Sorry, Dave. Philosophically, Fran, you know, a lot of NBA coaches have said, "I'd rather be fresh than prepared." Are you similar in sentiment? Absol well, if you're not prepared by February 1st in terms of all the things you've done with your team for four months, then you might as well just pack it in. And there's no question, mentally, you must start to gear down. In terms of practice length and you know Doris you and I were around Rick Barnes in the early part wow. of his career. Yes, he really has learned to dial and, it back. I sense that with Rick Pitino too. Yeah. You know I talked to Rick about it earlier in the year and you, you can put different things in down the stretch of the season a few more wrinkles in your offense maybe a change here in the pick and roll defense but by February 1st you have to start to really physically make sure your team is fresh going into March. Rick Barnes will actually tell you it was the swim coach who had won multiple national titles who had to come into his office and say coach you lost that game for your team last night and Rick goes we're not that good of friends. <laughs> Meanwhile, 14 3 run by UConn, missed by Young. Campbell Walker has 26 points now, 19 in the second half. As looks like Connecticut's going to advance to round two tomorrow against Georgetown. Well, if you're UConn right now, keep in mind now, Kemba, Kemba Walker in Big East play plays almost 40 minutes a game. And I don't think he's come out of the game today. And he's got that look on his face right now that he could use a breather, but he's not going to get one. Keep in mind, too, Connecticut has lost six straight games in the Big East Tournament. Their last win was against Georgetown in 2005 as Coombs McDaniel hits a three. And if he plays like he is today and like he did during that stretch in February, giving Connecticut another score for the NCAA Tournament, they can beat some people. Lamb had a great first half today with 17 points, just two since intermission. Young can't score inside. And here's Napier down court. He lost it. Turned it over. Timeout. Now Connecticut here in New York City. 321 away from advancing to round two of the Big East tournament. Leading to Paul, 85-64. Game for Marquette against the nation's second leading scorer, Marshawn Brooks in Providence. I think arguably the most important thing you can do if you're Jay Wright and the team is turn inward. You have to put all the noise aside. Everybody's talking about how poorly you're playing. You've got a limited window to get better and start winning basketball games. Fran, how do you do that? Well, you know, the, the first thing is you got to hope Corey Stokes is going to be healthy. But if he's not, the one thing Jay Wright said is the Big East can make you look like an ordinary basketball team. I think they've shot, they've shot too many jump shots to me during this stretch. To me, they're at their best when Fisher and Waynes are attacking the rim. Under three to go, UConn by 21. It's a 17-3 Husky run. DePaul got within seven at 68-61. Meanwhile, Jeremiah Kelly continues to stroke it. That's his fifth three-point basket. Now DePaul foul, though. And Connecticut in the double bonus. Connecticut's women's team in action tonight in the Big East Women's Championship at 7 Eastern taking on Notre Dame. Should be a good one. And then Butler against Milwaukee in the Men's Horizon League Championship at 9. Well, Connecticut just keeps on keeping on. It is as short a roster as Gina Oriema has had in a very, very long time. Great semifinal between Notre Dame and DePaul, two teams that will be in the NCAA tournament for sure on the women's side. And both could make some significant 
significant moves in that tournament. What does uh, Muffet McGraw's team have to do tonight to win this game? Obviously, it's a, it's a tough mountain to climb. The, the biggest thing to me and the biggest difference for Notre Dame this year has been Devereaux Peters, who gives them a real inside presence, uh, very long, very athletic, and healthy, and she's made all the difference in the world. UConn 25 to 27 at the free throw line in this game, guys. And a 20 point lead. They beat the Paul by 20 in their one regular season meeting. And looks like it'll be UConn and Georgetown. Going to be an interesting game tomorrow. UConn beat Georgetown during the regular season, but that was a month ago. Well, well, Things were a lot different for yeah, Georgetown. Though. That's right. And, and, and really, we said it at the top. The bracket opened up for UConn with the injury first to Cleveland Melvin and Paul. Chris Wright is out. That is a different Georgetown team, certainly. And uh, Jim Calhoun, although they struggled down the stretch, has an opportunity to get to the quarterfinals where they would see the Pitt Panthers. We were talking with some of the UConn people before the game. They think they could get a five seed in the NCAA tournament as Kemba Walker is likely done for the day. His best Madison Square Garden performance and his first Big East tournament win. It means Kemba's only going to play 37 minutes today. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll get about a 22 hour rest. Well, we've seen some great performances through the years from guys that have willed their team. Every time I see the Jerry McNamara yes. highlights, you know, you, you kind of think of Kemba a little bit with this team. And DePaul going to fall to seven and 24, but going to be an interesting program to watch over the next couple of years with Oliver Purnell at the helm. Can they get some of the Chicago kids to stay home as Oriaki scores inside? Well, I, I think they will, and it's what we said at the very beginning. He knows how to build a program, and you notice today they've been pressing running. They've, they haven't stopped playing hard, and no question that they've got the right guy in terms of building in a tough spot. Brandon Young is one of the young guys that Purnell will look to over the next couple of years. Freshman from Baltimore will hit that shot there. And as much as I like Brandon Young's skill, you know what I like best? He's fearless. The guy attacks. Roscoe Smith with the bucket as Connecticut just killing DePaul in transition. That's been one of the stories today. There's Young in the lane, and a three pointer by Kelly won't go. Rebound. UConn 26 2 in fast break points in favor of the Huskies. You would think that will change tomorrow based on the pace, right, with Georgetown? Absolutely. Different yep. game? Different game, different offense. Georgetown grinds you with that. I don't want to even say Princeton offense because John Thompson has certainly adopted it. But How about the job he's done, by the, by the way, guys? Remember early in the year, mid-January, yes. they got blown out at home by Pitt. And they looked bad. They got out of the gates 0 for 0 and 4. And, and then they went on a run. Well, there's so little margin for error in this league when you lose a key guy. You think about Jeremy Hazell at Seton Hall, a guy that they played 13 games without. You lose a Chris Wright or a Cleveland Melvin in this league, and uh, unless you're loaded like Pittsburgh is and has that and even when Carlton Scott got hurt for Notre Dame early in January it set them back a little bit so there's so little margin for error uh, when you lose a key guy. Well if Georgetown goes 0 and 4 in the Big East with Chris Wright with a full complement of players and he still manages to turn things around I mean that 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 is an extraordinarily difficult thing to do and that to a man Austin Freeman and Chris Wright talking about the fact that they never you don't turn on each other you, you get tighter. Alex Oriaki is done for the day, but it was a good day. 13 points and 19 rebounds, which ties a Connecticut Big East tournament single game record. Travis Knight, remember him? Against Seton Hall back in 1996, also had 19 rebounds. Travis Knight was built a little different than yes, Alex Oriaki. Mm -hmm. I know it's against DePaul, but this has got to please. Jim Calhoun and the coaching staff seeing Oriaki be more assertive. Yes, right. Well, the bench helped, I think, sitting him on the bench for the first yeah. couple minutes. Maybe yeah. that did the trick. Yeah, and, and Jim will be pleased for at least five minutes <laughs> after this game. <laughs> at least. And then he's going to think about getting ready for Georgetown. That's how it should be. 
If I fouled on his way to the bucket. I think the most satisfying thing for Jim Calhoun I know he wants to win this tournament is that he's got 22 wins and I, I remember my second year at St. John's when we were playing Syracuse in the semifinal and I thought it was house money yes. like we're going to the tournament it doesn't matter what right. happens and so he's going to want to win tomorrow but he also knows that this team with six freshmen and sophomores in the top seven in scoring has, has really I think overachieved. Yeah. Now they're pick 10 preseason. And when people picked them 10th, they weren't thinking 9 and 9. They were thinking 6 and 12, and 7 we were, and 11. And, and we weren't thinking 11 teams right. from the league in the tournament, possibly. There's Stovall. And rebound by Olander. So Connecticut goes to 22 and 9. Will take on Georgetown. What a great second round Big East tournament matchup that will be. An 8 9 game Georgetown and UConn. Unbelievable. Think back to the Ray Allen, Allen Iverson matchup, and Ray Allen is the hero at the end. Great Big East moment. 15 year anniversary of that great final. Connecticut wins at 97 71 over DePaul. 26 point win, the largest margin of victory for UConn in a Big East tournament game. Advancing to play Georgetown tomorrow at noon on ESPN. Seton Hall and Rutgers up next after a break here on ESPN 2. Final score, UConn 97, Kemba Walker with 26 points, DePaul 71. For Fran Fraschilla, Doris Burke, our entire ESPN2 crew, I'm Dave Pash. More coming from the Big East Tournament about 20 minutes away. Seton Hall and Rutgers. Out of the studio, John Saunders and Doug Gottlieb after a UConn win over DePaul in game one of the 2011 Big East Championship. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. We're going to get you back out to Madison Square Garden in a moment for an interview. But first, from the UConn perspective, to win five games in five days and win the Big East Tournament is a lot to expect. But you actually, as far as the second day goes, facing Georgetown tomorrow, you think today gives them an advantage. I don't think there's any question, especially against an opponent, John, uh, like DePaul. You know, one in which everyone gets in. You play, you're playing up and down, so everyone's getting shots. You know, you start to gain some confidence. I mean, Lamb had 17 at the break. Oriaki ends up with 19 offensive rebounds. Maybe you get a little bit inflated self-esteem, mm -hmm. but at least you grow your self-confidence. You get loose so that when you step on the floor tomorrow at Madison Square Garden, you've gotten all the butterflies out of not having won. No one on this team had won a Big East tournament game. And Georgetown, without Chris Wright, Plus, they've played one game in about 10 days. Right now, as I said, we want to go back to Madison Square Garden to Doris Burke, who's with Jim Calhoun. Thank you, John. Coach Calhoun, you sat Alex Oriaki. I'll get to Kemba in a second, but you sat Alex Oriaki to start this basketball game, looking maybe to inspire him to get back on the glass. Well, how do you like how he responded? Well, I think by putting him on the bench and, and not starting him anymore, he started 29 consecutive games, and then we had benched him the last two, and I think he responded exceptionally well, obviously, and I think that, uh, you know, we were good at times. At times, we had some let-ups on defense and breaking pressure, but it's one of the few times that we've been able to get up and down the floor, and I think we didn't know how to handle it, so we handled it very loosely, and that kind of caused some things, but we had the guy beside me and Alex and so on, so... Uh, we hadn't won here in about four or five years, so uh, I, I like a win here, and I like the opportunity to face Georgetown tomorrow. Every big shot in the second half, this guy was involved, but let me get to Jeremy Lamb and his first half performance. 22 wins with so many young guys. How proud are you of the way those young guys have responded this year? Well, I love this team. I keep on saying that. The only thing is sometimes they don't know how good they can be, and, and we get a little bit not focused, and I think that's got a lot to do with you, but uh, we can rely on uh, 15 here. And things turn out pretty well. The young guys are just trying to get you a little more gray. Coach, thank you. Kemba Walker, despite the fact that this is your hometown, it hasn't always been good to you at Madison Square Garden. Today was a different story. Uh, just talk about what your, your mindset coming in here today on your home floor, what this was about for you. Well, you know, um, you know it's playoffs. Um, you know, we just came off you know, two losses, two big losses. Um, and you know, we just want to be aggressive and you know, just you know, get a win. You know, it's been a while since we got a win in, in, in this tournament, and you know, it's our chance. And you know, we came out and got it. 
You've talked an awful lot about Jeremy Lamb and what you see in him as a basketball player, Shabazz Napier. But the key for you guys has been the rebounding. How much conversation have you had with Alex Moriaki as it relates to your team's success being based on what he does? A lot. Um, you know, me and Alex talk all the time you know, about rebounding. You know, he's been having some bad games lately on, on the rebounding end. And, you know, we just saw him, you know, just... Just stop thinking out there. Just play basketball and, and do what you do, and that's that's what he did. That's what he did um, today. Keep smiling. Nice yeah. job, guys. Well, Kemba Walker is always smiling, and, and the question is whether he'd be smiling tomorrow as they face the Georgetown Hoyas. UConn is a second round, and that's some good news for the Hoyas because the, the Huskies have won two of the last three regular season meetings, both of the previous two times they've met in the Big East tournament since 2000, and of course. The last time they met was in the regular season, and Jamal Coombs McDaniel was the guy who really stepped up in this game. Kemba Walker had a great game, but Coombs McDaniel had 23 points. He's in the witness protection program for this game. <laughs> you know, he was talking about transferring, and they gave them the ability to go small, and here's why it's important. What are they going to face tomorrow? A Georgetown zone. What has UConn struggled against throughout the entire lifespan of the Big East season? They've struggled against zone. Coos McDaniel's size and length at the defensive end allows them to play small at the offensive end. He can float it in and out as a three, as a four, into that high post. Because normal, normally when they play their two, high, two big post look, you know, with Okwandu and Oriaki, yeah. neither are good high post passers or high post scorers. So despite the fact that that's really the weakness into any zone, specifically two, three zones or, or matchup zones like you're going to see tomorrow against Georgetown, they're not really able to expose that weakness because when you throw it in there, neither really do anything good with it. Aquandu doesn't even look at the basket yeah. when, when they throw it in there.